Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who continues to pray in the desert for all of us, be with you always. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you on this fifth Sunday of Lent, really the last official Sunday of Lent. Next week we begin Holy Week, so Passion Sunday comes. We continue our journey, our journey that can lead us to Easter. Uh, but we're so challenged each Sunday as we gather here to really examine our journey and our relationship with Christ. And how committed are we to uh, following Christ? If that's true, then we're looking at what Jesus did during his life and saying, are we doing the same thing? Because he asked us to carry on his ministry. So as we begin our liturgy, we pause at the beginning as always and reflect back on this past week. How successful was I? Or were the moments that I now regret, moments I'm sorry for, for those, we ask God's forgiveness. Have mercy. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech thee, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly to that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
Will your compassion wipe out my offense? Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will, will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there also will my servants be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it is for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came down from heaven. 
I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted high up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe we had rushed to Easter because the gospel acclamation was the A word that we're not using during Lent. Uh, hallelujah. So I'm sure we'll fix it by the next Mass. We have those moments. Next month, we're celebrating a special day. And I wonder if you would know what it is. It's April 15th. What is that day? No, I'm not talking about tax day. In fact, it's May 15th this year. They moved it. So you have a couple more months to drag your feet and getting it done, okay? But I'm talking about the 132nd anniversary of the death of Saint Father Damien of Molokai. It was 132 years ago that he, after dedicating a great portion of his life, succumbed to the illness of leprosy. But it's good to understand his life in a, in a brief form. Now, I share with you. From a child, he wanted to be a priest. He wanted to serve. He wanted to be a missionary. And he kept asking his parents that he wanted to go off to the seminary. They kept telling him, you're too young. You're too young. And then he finished high school. He said, I still want to go. I said, well, we think you're too young. We, you really should go into business with us. They were successful in whatever they were doing. In the meantime, his older brother had been ordained a priest. And his two older sisters had become religious sisters. So the inspiration was there. And finally, at the right time, the right moment, he said to them, I need to go. I'm being called to priesthood. So finally, his family relented and allowed him to go into the seminary to study for the Sacred Heart Fathers. And he struggled. It was hard. Finally, got to the very end, and they had to make a decision, you know, should we ordain him? Because, unfortunately, he was not the most academic individual. But luckily, his brother, the priest, had taught him Latin. And so he was able to impress the professors and those in charge, and finally they relented and said, let's ordain him. He's going to be just a simple priest, you know, maybe it's a little parish somewhere, not causing any problems or whatever, whatever it might have done. But he got ordained, and he had this zeal for the gospel. And he wanted to say, be a missionary, so he was hoping that he'd finally get an assignment. And then his brother got assigned to come, to go to Hawaii, to the kingdom of Hawaii. that still was under the royalty of, of the kings and the queens and the Hawaiian islands. And so his brother got assigned there, and just as he was about to go, he became seriously ill. And so Damien went to the superior and said, please, allow me to go. Allow me to go to the islands to spread the, the Christian faith there. So they, again, they relented and said, we're going to send you. He'll be harmless there. He won't cause any problems. At that time, Hawaii was struggling because a lot of foreign visitors had brought disease and illness, including leprosy. And they were scared of that disease. They weren't sure what to do with it. Finally, the king ordered that all those with leprosy were going to be sent to the island of Molokai, on the peninsula part of the island there. Because it was not a penal colony. It was a place where you know, they could live respectfully for the rest of their lives. And so as they got there, uh, to the islands, the king made a, reply, a request to the church to send priests maybe to the island to work with the people, to give them some kind of support. And the order could not order anyone to go because of the conditions of what was going on there, but some volunteered, but especially Damien. And Damien accepted to go to the islands. And there he saw people who were in desperate need. He saw God's people, the individuals who were yearning for the faith, and he spent almost two decades there with them. And he began to lift their spirits by allowing them to live with dignity. He built a church for, literally a church, began to build homes for a road for them, 
buildings there, to build a community. Of course, the struggle was that he began to lose people at the same time. But he felt that he needed to be there. Forget everybody else. He called to be for them their priest, their representative of God. Eventually, they began to name him, at the end after his death, the martyr of charity because of pure charity that he was there with them. After being there for a number of years, finally, one day, he went to take a shower, filled the tub with, with water, didn't realize it was scalding hot, and he put his foot in there. He should have screamed, but he didn't feel anything, a sign that he himself had not contracted leprosy. But he still served them until the very end, sometimes dragging his legs to do this and to inspire them. And when, when he passed away, the island mourned him. But so did all the people of Hawaii. Because here was a man who was doing incredible service to God. He gave his life for the cause of spreading the gospel. He did what he knew that God was calling him to do. He sacrificed, but didn't look at it as a sacrifice. Life on the mainland, his family, to be with those individuals who really needed him. And that, to me, sounds like Jesus Christ. Christ, who was willing to give up his life for the sake of inspiring people to come to know the message of the gospel. He was sent by his Father into the world to make an incredible difference. And some people, as you all know, began to accept him. Others did not. Others rejected him right off. Because what he was asking to do was to change their hearts and to look at each other as children of God, brothers and sisters, and some did not want to accept people that were not of their faith, maybe of their culture, of their town, of their area. And he, but he went out to the extremes and brought them all in, feeding them, guiding them, inspiring them, talking to them, sharing what he knew. And because of that, many came to know and to love Christ, but others did not. And ultimately, those that were afraid of what he was doing, those that did not accept what he was doing, those that rejected his message to protect themselves, finally did the ultimate, had him arrested, going through his passion, through his death, through his, uh, his crucifixion, but ultimately the resurrection. So even though their efforts were so horrible, God did not allow him to stop there. And he gave the people hope that they continued his mission of living that gospel, their lives would be well. Here we are today. And we're called to continue to also look around and say, you know, as a Christian, what am I doing for the sake of others? What can I do for the spread of the gospel? Am I willing to do it? Am I willing to sacrifice myself some time, some talents, some gifts? Especially this last year, I've looked around and I've seen people who are willing to do that for the sake of other people. I looked at all the first responders in hospitals and medical facilities and those that are willing to keep serving, to keep people fed and all those kind of things. These are people, in a sense, who are a, a martyr of char martyrs of charity. Even though they put themselves second, they're trying to protect themselves, and hopefully they, uh, they do. People who respond, I see families gathering together, protecting one another. I see you all, many of you going out, you're still doing your work, trying to be careful, as you, and come back to you, you don't want to bring that disease home. I see children who are struggling because they're not used to learning from home. Now things seem to be turning and schools seem to be reopening. Thanks be to God, our school here has been open for many months, and so far everything has been successful and wonderful. Our children have been safe. And as a community, we have continued to gather here safely for the most part, spread apart. Most of you fall in directions, you know, where they're placed on us to protect one another. I make sure that we are cooperating as much as possible. But we do this all because we want to share the word of God with one another. A year ago, we were closed down. A year ago, we did not celebrate Easter here. We did not celebrate Holy Week here. We did not celebrate P Passion Sunday. But that's changed. And next Sunday, we begin Holy Week. Most of our services are going to be here on our, in our patio. And we have a reason to rejoice this year. And we pray and hope that we will continue to go forward. And that our, and our, certainly our country will continue here. The rest of the world is far too are struggling. And I know there's all the debate about how much we should be helping others, and I know that's going to come. And, but we have to realize that other places in the world are not as fortunate as we are. And we should be giving thanks that we are where we are right now, but also keep praying that others will also receive the help that they need 
so we can probably eliminate this illness from our world once and forever. My friends, as we are blessed right now, look around saying, where can I extend a hand? Where can I help safely someone who is struggling? And I've said this before, minimally, one of the greatest challenges of this time has, has been isolation. To call someone, to text someone, to email someone, to drive by a honk, wave to someone, let them know you're not forgotten. That's the way we, we build people up. And that might cause us to lose a few minutes. Think that we can do it for ourselves. We sacrifice it for the sake of someone else. That doesn't take a lot. Or to give someone a phone call and think, but I don't really like that person. It doesn't matter. You're called to represent Christ. You lift that person up. You do it. It might cost you a few minutes, but the sacrifice is good. Where can we serve Christ? Where can we be people of the gospel of today? That's our challenge today. Meet the challenge. Respond to each other. Love him as Christ did. Dedicate a part of your life. Damien dedicated his, the entire rest of his life. He died, I believe, he was 49 years old when he passed away. But he is still remembered as the martyr of charity. Let us all be filled with charity and share it with others. Now, as disciples of charity, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, yet substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God will hear us, we offer our prayers for the church and the world. Our response is, Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For increased vocations to the diverse ministries that give life in abundance to the church, let us pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For civil authorities who through prayer and meditation grow to value the enduring power of, lo of loving charity, let us pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For those dedicated to faith formation and for those with whom they share the treasures of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For, und for undone undaunted faith in the members of this assembly 
and in our elect catechumens and candidates, let us pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For all our friends and parishioners who are ill, and all those ill with coronavirus, that they may be assisted by our prayers and be returned to health quickly. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For all our deceased relatives, friends, and parishioners, especially Clara Germain and Rosemary Chichi, and all those who have perished because of the coronavirus, that they may be gathered by the Lord into his kingdom of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. For Scott Valentino and Fran Vin and their family's special intention, we pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. And for our own attention, which we mention now in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Christ in the desert, hear our prayers. God of nations, your people know your miracles. Hear the prayers of our hearts and grant them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, the Lord, the sacrifice at your hand, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both <laughs> virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, the blessed seraphim, worship together with exultation. May our voices that we join, pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. begin to near Easter, our hearts should begin now to be filling with joy because Christ, you know, will be risen from the dead, but Christ is always with us, and he, much, he wanted to be with us always, so he gave us a prayer to unite us. We're now able to raise our voices in that prayer. By the help of your mercy, be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity according with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our announcements. The St. Pascal Men's Club will be holding one more Lenten special drive, fish fry drive through Next Friday, March 26th, between the hours of 4.30 and 6.30 p.m., you'll be able to drive through our parking lot, follow directions of the volunteers to behind the hall, and choose the fish option plate of your choice. All meals are pickup only to take home. Please help spread the word about this last one of the fish fries. The good thing about it, we're doing this, you don't smell the fish so much outside, okay? <laughs> so I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, the wind's blowing and say, oh my God, I can smell McDonald's, it's even better. So that, that combination. But if you're into that, come by, but it'll be the last one. We only, this is only the second one, but the last one. And I, I commend the uh, men's club for organizing it and doing a very successful uh, operation uh, last Friday. St. Pascal's is starting an adult confirmation class this, this April, the next month, you know, this next month. All adults looking to complete the sacraments of initiation, confirmation, are welcome. Classes will be Monday nights on Zoom. The adults who complete this program will be confirmed by Bishop Barron with the youth of our parish on Sunday, May the 16th. So please contact Frank Williams at the parish office for more information. And so telling parents and grandparents, if your young adults are home from college because they are, the co colleges are closed, and they never got confirmed, this is a great time for them. They're, they're, they're into Zooming now, so they just Zoom a month of those classes that they can confirm, which they didn't get a confirmation. This is the way of completing that, so encourage them, if you will. Uh, we are hoping for a great turnout for Easter. Uh, Easter always brings out a lot of people, and so uh, hopefully that this field will be full. So I'm encouraging people, if you're going to be coming or know people want to come, tell them to bring their own chairs, umbrellas, pop-up tents, and maybe to fill this field with, uh, the, the hall of the field with people. I'm also encouraging you, if you have an Easter bonnet, you all have one, put it on. Bring a lot of color into this thing, men, women included. And can you imagine a whole field of Easter bonnets there? I'm picturing it. I'm hoping for it. We'll see what happens, okay? Uh, and so Easter, all services will be here. Uh, next Sunday is Holy Week, so Palm Passion Sunday will follow our regular Sunday schedule, including Saturday evenings, 5.30 and 7. Holy Thursday will be here at 7 o'clock. Uh, there are certain things we cannot do. We won't have the washing of the feet. We're not allowed to ha have that. Good Friday will be here at 1 o'clock at the Good Friday service. This year, people are not allowed to touch the cross. You can, you can make a sign of reverence, but we're still under guidelines of what we can and cannot do. The Easter Vigil Mass will be here in the patio as well, and there are going to be, I believe, uh, six baptisms and other comp all sacraments of confirmation, and so we'll have that great celebration again patio, and then on Easter Sunday, um, people will be welcome to come back here, but like I said, we don't have enough chairs if a big crowd comes, so encourage people, you yourselves, don't take a chance, bring a chair or two or a blanket, as I said, dress up for the occasion, celebrate with us on that great celebration. The list of services are on our website. It'll be, we're actually giving out our first bulletin on almost a year today. Um, so uh, the, the schedule is not there. It'll be in there for next Sunday. Okay, so the ushers will hand those out. Passion Sunday, we will be giving out a uh, branch of uh, palms, but you know, do it maybe a little bit different as well. They're gonna be handed out at the end of mass, but they will be blessed during the mass. Taking precautions, we wanna keep everyone safe. We wanna keep you coming back and being a part for celebration. I thank our musicians, our lectors, servers, you can minister, ushers, and each of you, which are a blessing to us, carry the gospel message, make a difference in the world, let them know that Jesus Christ is still here with us, he has not left us, and we go forward better than ever before. Have a great rest of the day. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, our celebration has ended. Let us go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat>